Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Hello. Listen, <clears throat> I want to put a little challenge in your ear. I would like for you to take a chair and sit it in your garage. And I would like for you to sit in your chair. Sit on the chair that's in your garage. Okay. Sit there and wait and see what happens. If there's a mirror somewhere around, stick it in a position where you can see yourself sitting in that chair that's sitting in the garage. All right. Now, as time goes on, as long as you want to wait, is anything changing that you can tell? Are you still looking like yourself? Or are you taking on a metamorphosis? Hmm, where is she going with this one? Well, the point I want to make is picture yourself sitting in church every single week, twice a week, even including choir rehearsal. And you go and you sit, and you go and you sit, and you go and you sit, and you hear the word, and you sing the songs of Zion, and you raise holy hands to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you is, while you're sitting in that garage, or in that chair, have you changed? No. Why? Because sitting on that chair in the garage, no matter how long you sit in it, will no more make you, let me, let me put it this way, sitting in church no more makes you a Christian than sitting on that chair in that garage makes you a car. If you can't morph into a car, if you can't change your whole physical thing into becoming a, an automobile, then guess what? It's the same premise sitting in church. There are people who have attended churches for 10, 20, 30 years. And they have yet to become what God has intended for them to become. My mother used to tell me, Patty, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Well, it's the same with you. You can sit there throughout eternity and never change one iota. I used to sit in church years ago, and every time they had the altar call. There would always be this group of people that would walk up to the altar while the music was playing and it would have this nice warm fuzzy feeling to the sound of the music and everyone standing up at the altar while they pray and they hold hands and they close their eyes while the prayer is going while the prayer is going forward and they turn around when the amen is spoken and they go back to their seats and they sit now here's the comical part some of these very people that go up to the altar every single sunday when the preaching was going on one of them this was so comical would spend half the service like this or they'd have their head cocked on somebody's shoulder, they're gone. <laughs> or they would be... <laughs> Nothing at all to do with the service. No engagement whatsoever. The person preaching might as well be preaching to an automobile in a garage. Same thing. Now, my challenge to you is, will you allow God's word 
to wash you and make you clean? Will you truly repent from your heart? Or when you listen to the songs of Zion, are you really there for God to make a difference in your life? Or are you really there for entertainment? Boy, she could get down. Listen to that. Listen to that voice. Oh, that man is so fine. When he hits those low notes, I just melt. Oh, he could really sing. And if you ask, well, what did he sing about? Well, I don't know. He's just got a nice voice. Do you know how many people go to church for entertainment? This is an entertainment society. It's oriented for entertainment. When people preach, they could be making phenomenal points and oh, great ideas and great insights and all of that. But the person that's there for entertainment, whoo, preach. Woo, yes. Oh, that man, he's a preaching machine. What do he preach about? Let me see. Um, I have to get my notes. <laughs> Taking notes and everything. I'm telling you that no more makes you a Christian than sitting in your garage makes you a car.